So uh, it was really interesting to listen to um, the lecture by my esteemed colleague, uh, Professor Cvetic, because she was talking about dimensions and I was tempting to go on because I'm a topologist, so I, this is my bread, I make my living out of studying uh, various dimensions. However, that's not the right audience for this. Uh, I will speak about uh, this very important uh, idea of Abdus Salam, the Nobel Prize winner, um, who established uh, this very important institute. But I want to explain how I got to, to the idea to talk about this. So when I received uh, the invitation to attend this uh, very important event, I was thinking what would be of interest to a very diverse audience, and then again, what would really go along with the uh, idea of the conference that is uh, out of the box thinking. And so um, it occurred to me that probably that would be the issue of, also among many issues that uh, would be appropriate, of education, and I was really very surprised uh, this morning when His Holiness Dalai Lama raised the issue of education as one of the most important uh, things for the humankind. So this will be in some sense uh, describing an out-of-the-box idea concerning education. Um, Abdus Salam is a very famous person in theoretical physics and uh, just a few words about his achievements. Uh, he was born in Pakistan, and he got his basic education in Pakistan, but that at some point in his life, as he said in one of the interviews, he had to decide either to stay in Pakistan or uh, to go abroad, I mean, to stay in Pakistan and leave physics or to leave Pakistan and study physics. So he had to go abroad, and he became one of the leading physicist of his time, um, among uh, the many awards he received for his work was uh, sharing the Nobel Prize with Glashow and Weinberg uh, for their work on the electroweak unification theory of the electromagnetic and weak forces. So um, what was the idea of Abdus Salam? Well, he realized the necessity for education, bringing education to the uh, underprivileged, so to the third world, as we say today. And um, it is, of course, impossible to help many countries which are underprivileged by bringing them top quality education. On the other hand, we cannot take too many students from these countries and bring them to the uh, excellent universities abroad. So he thought of the following idea which he then started to develop in Trieste. He would uh, start a so-called diploma course, and that uh, course is for one year, and they bring top students from un underdeveloped countries, and they train them for a year in subjects I will describe. And then after this year of training, these students can actually go on and apply to the real graduate schools. And many do, and several of them succeed. And then hopefully they return home to their country, and these are the seeds. They will then start to develop departments of either mathematics or physics in their own countries. So I'll mention also a little bit statistics, so we'll see how this is spread out over the world. So that's the idea that Salam had to help develop, in particular, mathematics and physics. He couldn't do everything, so he thought of these two subjects, which were closest to his own knowledge and expertise, uh, and he started this uh, endeavor. So the Center of Theoretical Physics was founded many years ago, in fact, in 64, and uh, it was no coincidence that they chose Abdus Salam, because by then he was very famous, not only for his work, but also for his uh, influence and work, not only in Pakistan, but in many other areas of, uh, of the world. And he's also was always known as an excellent organizer, a great teacher, and a great stimulator. Um, the idea of ICTP, which is funded not only by UNESCO, but also by the Italian government, is to provide the scientists from the developing countries to come and attend 
not just the diploma course, there are conferences and workshops going on all the time. And they come to every of these meetings, they come uh, maybe 100, 150 uh, participants. And of course, the schools are run by very good experts, uh, among them also Fields medalists, for instance, in mathematics, and Nobel Prize winners in physics. So Salam was able to start this series of meetings, which would be basically run as workshops preceded by one or two weeks of um, lectures to bring uh, the basic information for, for, to the scientists from the developing world. But of course, the missing uh, link was here, the students. These were already people who have gotten their degree and they were working, trying to do research in the third world. And that was for them a way to connect to what's going on in their field. So this is a brief timeline of ICTP. As I said, it was founded uh, in 64. And then uh, mathematics, which is my field, was added uh, in 71. Um, there are some other um, timelines uh, here. But uh, in particular, I point out that in 91, uh, they started diploma courses in high energy physics and condensed matter. And then a year later, they uh, started to run diploma courses. And I know a little bit about this uh, because I was there from the very start uh, due to the invitation of the first chairman of the math department at ICTP, Professor Eels, the late um, Professor Eels uh, from England, an excellent mathematician, a leader in his field, and uh, a great organizer also. So he would look around Trieste and see how many uh, mathematicians he could gather, and he looked a little bit across the border, uh, including to Ljubljana, so he invited me to help teach topology. And since then, I've been going there every year and teaching the students, and I think it was really rewarding for me uh, to work with these uh, students. So if we first look at the areas covered by the visitors, so this is not just diploma course, of course, this is all the visitors that come to the meetings at ICTP, you see that since 1970, there's an enormous number of visits, and the visitors represent almost 200 countries. So they're really spreading uh, their mission. And I, I explain how this works. So when ICTP runs a conference or a, a school, they invite anyone who wants to attend, but they support only the qualifying uh, students from the developed world. So also the scientists can come from the, let's say, developed countries, but they have to fund their participation from their own research grant. And that works very well. They have also an excellent library. Uh, this is really one of the key things um, that ICTP can be really proud of. They have an excellent library and even, uh, let's say, in mathematics from Ljubljana, I often go and find uh, papers here that we don't have in our library and we used to pride that we have a very good mathematical library. They also have a very important service for the developing world. They provide to the students from the developing world online access, or at least they get them the papers they need for their studies for free. So, um, they run what's called the diploma program, and this is, in some sense, postgraduate diploma course. Uh, they will uh, invite every year, thinking about mathematics, up to 10, no more, up to 10 students. And this is a strict uh, selection process, and they choose the best possible candidates, but they do take care that they uh, are not, uh, they're coming from diverse countries. So the program so far has been uh, started in these five areas, so four in physics and one in mathematics. And just for the uh, mathematicians in the audience, these are the subjects that uh, we cover in the two terms. Because I said, this is one year course. Students come in the fall and then they leave in, by, by August they are gone. So it's one year. It's a regular curriculum you would see in any graduate school, but you should mind that this is the introduction to the students and let's say topology, then they will start the study in earnest when they get to the real graduate school. In physics, the physicists in the audience, that's the curriculum that it is offered. And uh, here's a little bit of statistics. 
So the total number of students since 91 is uh, over 600, and it's a high success rate. You see, 602 got uh, to the end of it. So I must say, for, based from my experience, that these students are extremely motivated. And some of them are well prepared, some of them are not. I mean, they come from countries which are torn by war, they have great poverty, but they have extremely high motivation. And mostly, I should say, those who fail, fail because of some unexpected thing like illness, or they just cannot adapt. I mean, they do come to a completely different country with a different lifestyle. But that is very rare. And here is by specialization, how they uh, arrived uh, to the ICTP. So a very large percentage uh, is in high energy physics and in condensed matter physics. That is also because of the strength of ICTP in these areas. And uh, math mathematics is quite well presented, although this is a very tiny department in ICTP. And then there's also uh, two other physics, general and earth uh, system physics. By gender, uh, well, there's a 22% of female uh, students. And um, you should keep in mind that that's not because of any kind of bias, but it is still a problem for female students to be traveling abroad from many undeveloped countries. Not because the countries wouldn't let them go, but because maybe of family traditions and, you know, you're sending a girl of age 22 to the other side of the world, you would think twice even, you know, in this country. Uh, maybe. So that's, there are many, many obstacles that they, they have to overcome. But they, they also work very diligently. Uh, and as I can say, being a, a professor for over 30 years, I mean, the attendance rate you can only dream of is 100%. If the student is not there, he must be ill or dead. I mean, it's just uh, impossible for them to skip classes. And uh, even if they're ill, they, then next time they would. Uh, apologize profusely for being absent. So this is really very, very good uh, class to work with. Um, here's the nationality breakdown. So you see that uh, both of them will come from Asia and Africa. So from Africa, I can list, uh, for instance, Sudan. Today we had a gentleman from uh, Sudan in the audience of His Holiness, then Ethiopia. Now these students, of course, they had very hard time studying. And uh, still, also, in some of the African countries, the foreign language is not English, it's French. Nevertheless, the lectures are in English, and they do have to struggle with that a little bit. But still, they work very hard. From Asia, they will come from countries, uh, Pakistan, India, Vietnam, uh, there are several countries. And of course, for instance, Vietnam, they had a long tradition of um, mathematics, and these students will be much, much more prepared. But nevertheless, they work very diligently, they don't skip any classes, and they have a very high rate of success, not just in diploma course where they had a straight uh, excellent grade, but also in the graduate classes. Oh, I see. So I should switch. They're homeomorphic. Shouldn't be much. Okay. And the future of the students, uh, well, they keep track of the students when they go on. Um, so typically, in about this time of the year, we would start to get requests for, from students to write for them recommendation letters. Uh, I can say that in mathematics, many of them try to study in Europe, which is natural because they're already here. And now it will be even easier for them because uh, just next to ICTP, it's almost the same building, uh, in a really epsilon distance, is CISA which means uh, Scuola uh, Internazionale de Studi Avanzati. Uh, and they have a PhD program also in mathematics, and now they have a joint program. But otherwise they try, um, well, it depends. If they come from French, formerly French-dominated uh, countries, they would try to go to France. Uh, if they come from other countries, they often try to go to Germany. Bonn is very popular. Well, it's obvious, it's one of the best centers in Europe. And uh, some of them, they go to the United States. Uh, on the other hand, students from Asia, they would go to Singapore or Malaysian universities. So they really um, spread out. Okay, well, so basically, I think that's mostly what I wanted to say. So I think that um, Professor Salam uh, can be credited not only for his uh, outstanding work in physics, where he got the Nobel Prize from, but also for his work for education, not only in Pakistan, but in the whole world. And with this really original idea, 
which before him no one thought of apparently, to establish a small but effective center whose only purpose is, which is diploma course center, is to prepare the students from developing countries to then go on and study in the graduate schools abroad. Thank you for your attention.